Hey friends, it's Julie from Plan to Create. I swear it's not rainbow bright, although that might be what you're thinking in your head right now. But it's Julie, I do love my mod liners, I do love my inks, and you're gonna see these in my planner a lot. And that's part of what this video is about, is to just share the materials and the supplies that I'm planning to use next month, which is January, and I'm going to walk you through how I choose them, what I choose, and just give a little bit more um, of my, I'm even giving myself a little bit of a parameter right now. I have a lot of materials, I have a lot of supplies, I love to collect stickers, I love all things paper and ink, and so it's easy for me to get carried away myself, so I can only imagine that maybe you have some of the same struggles. So what I'm going to be doing at the end of the month is I'm going to be setting aside a group of materials that I'll work with the following month. I'm going to try to hold myself accountable by sharing these videos and I'm going to make it fun, but if it becomes a chore, then I'm going to ditch it and just have fun. And that's the message I would send to you. This whole, the whole point of this is maybe to help you collect and kind of create your own little do-it-yourself kit that you then use the whole entire month in your planner. But again, the whole point is for fun and to help you kind of stay focused. If it is no longer fun, then let me know and we don't have to do this. But I just thought it's something that I know in the past has helped me. I've definitely planned like an entire month using the same color schemes and then it just feels so consistent in my planner and it just is a really nice um, way for me to be able to track and find information easily because I know what I'm looking for time after time. So we'll get into that a little bit more, but first things first, I'm gonna kinda of scoot this up so you can actually see my planner because I want to show and share, I want to share the inserts that I'm going to be using this month. So I need to start off by saying that I have took a little bit of time last month and watched a few videos here on YouTube. I decided to just like kind of immerse myself in a little bit of something that maybe I wouldn't normally do. And so I watched, I started to look a little bit into like bullet journaling, and basically I came across an account called Lindsay Scribbles, and I'll link her below, and she had a bullet journal, but then I flipped over and all of a sudden she was in a Hobonichi, and I was just like, um, yes, add to cart. So I had a Hobonichi in my Amazon cart or wherever it was, and I was ready to go pull the trigger, and I thought to myself, Julie, you are going to hate the paper. Like, I was watching her, and I kind of see some, you know, shadowing coming through, and it didn't seem to bother her, but I know myself, and I know that it will bother me. So what I decided to do is to basically create my own little version of a Hobonichi. I know people call it maybe Fobonichi. I'm not, I've been hiding under a rock, so I'm not super familiar with all the terminology. But having said all that, I decided that I could do my own monthly of my own choice. I could do a weekly, hourly page, and then I would work in a daily into my routine for the month of January. So I'm super excited to try it. I was, again, I'm probably gonna watch one of her videos one more time just to kind of re-inspire myself. I felt like her cleaning, her planning style was very simple and clean and very functional, which of course I'm drawn to. She definitely comes back and adds in some stickers and stuff too, which of course I would also I'm probably gonna add a little bit more color and pop than maybe um, I saw on her pages, but I just was super inspired, so I wanna make sure you guys know where that inspiration came from. And then I just wanna just kind of explain, yeah, like what brought me to this place. Okay, so there are different Hobonichi styles out there. I believe there's like weeklies, which are more of a horizontal week on one page type situation, but the one that Lindsay was working with was like a, an A5, I believe, Hobonichi cousin or Teco. I don't remember exactly all the terminology, but I was just really inspired because I need to be able to see my whole week at a glance. I think that that's an important feature for me, and often that's been the only feature. I've tried to cram everything onto that view, and like last month, or this month in December, I was using the halvesies, and that really was a great way for me to get that view of my week, but then it gave me a lot of room to scribble down some to-do lists and other stuff at the bottom. So I will say like I definitely love a vertical view of my week, but I really liked the fact that she was able to write down the events that she wanted and she actually highlighted them, made them look a little bit different, but then she would just come back in and write her to-do lists regardless of whether she was gonna be actually doing that task at 8 a.m. or not. She just used that space to write to lists, and it could even be like something that she wanted to get done on Tuesday, she was writing it on Saturday, or vice versa. And so, kind of giving myself the freedom of like, oh, okay, like a weekly hourly page doesn't mean that I am locked into 10 o'clock, you know, vacuuming upstairs. It just means that, yeah, I need to vacuum upstairs sometime this week, and there's nothing else going on there. So, I love that aspect of it. But I also love the thought of like plugging in my have tos, my exercise, my meal planning 
my events that I need to be at. And then I love the fact that I can then see like where I have large holes in my schedule. So I'm really excited to use this type of a layout. And um, I wanted to talk really quickly that this particular one is a little bit thinner columns so that every day gets its own column. And I know that that's something that's important for some of you. Maybe you work on Saturdays and Sundays or your days are super packed with kids sports or schedules. So you need that extra space. So this one is for you. It means like your every day is gonna get some attention and you also have a room over here with a sidebar. The then you're gonna see here that I started the week off like that because it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But I also created a second version that has the wider like Erin Condren Happy Planner sticker friendly with columns. So this week is a total mix up. This, you wouldn't actually need to print yours like this. You could just print solidly the smaller columns or solidly the larger, but I'm just kind of breaking my this particular week up in between and opting for this. But so I have both of those available in my shop and Etsy. And then I jump into daily pages, which I've really hardly used before. I've created these a year or so ago and I didn't end up using them. But again, Lindsay really inspired me because number one, she would just maybe journal about her day in some open space or um, this would be in my mind a great place to like if you have a doodling challenge or some type of a you know create every day kind of thing going on this would be such a perfect canvas for that or like when I have a ton of things to do and I really need to block out my day and figure out when I'm going to be able to get everything in great space for that so I feel like this is just like super versatile and it gives me a lot of t a lot of space to play or to have structure. I will mention, I just go ahead and printed mine back to back to back. Of course, you could always put a piece of grid paper in between if you needed like a day sheet and like a total scratch pad um, in between each day. That's something else to keep in mind. You could always do that. But I felt like this was gonna be ample space between my weekly view and this. I felt like I should be able to sort that out. Um, you can see I've kind of come through and done a little bit of stamping, but I have just played to see what I could do with some of my stamps. Um, but I have plenty of days left and I'm hoping to kind of make it more of a daily practice where I'm doing something creative on these, whether I'm testing out a new stamp set or just playing with my usual ones, trying to think of a different configuration. I like doing that. It's a fun puzzle for my brain and it keeps me fresh creatively and interested. So that's what I'm doing for January and I'm going to stick with this the whole month. I hope to do a little bit of a recap at the end and you'll be able to see a glimpse of my pages and if I stuck with it or if I didn't, I guess it'll all be out there for everyone to see. And I'll try to do that, that will motivate me. But I had talked about maybe reprinting these monthly pages to make them a little bit prettier and I'm not sure if I'm going to. I might just leave that and then focus my energies a little bit more towards the weekly and the daily pages. So I'm super excited about that. I'm just ready to try something new and it just reminds me why I love my rings because I do get to choose the type of paper I want. I like 32 pound paper, I'll link it below. It's really smooth, Every all the pens write really nicely on it. My inks work out really well on it. They don't um, shadow through, so you can see that big old number one. Like if I really lift my page, maybe you can see it. I just, I think you really hardly can. Yeah, I still can barely see that through. So that just makes me happy to know that I can stamp and I can play around and things aren't gonna be coming through the next page. So, okay, so here I wanna talk about uh, some of the supplies that I'm gonna be using on those pages. So I'm using the Fobonichi style in the month of January, but here are the materials I'm gonna be using to decorate those pages. I wanna start off with my mild liners. You know I have six colors that I love, but I love to break them down and take a few that I feel like are seasonally appropriate and just really highlight those through the month. You may see all six colors appear on my pages because sometimes I can't help myself. I really have to color code and assign it to the actual person or the actual thing that it belongs to. But if I can just kind of work with three and stick with it, I think that it ends up looking really nice on my pages. So these are the three colors. It's the mild blue green, the mild green, and the mild gray that I've pulled inks that I know are super friendly with these colors. This is a Studio Calico Going Green, Studio Calico Gray area, and this one is from the stamp market. It's called Tropic Teal, and so those are ones that you'll see pop up in my planner. And basically I go through and I look at my stash. I have a little like file of stickers that I basically slide in according to dates, and so that's where this kind of showed up. This was part, these are part of a freckled fawn washi 
subscription that I belong to. They just do the washi strip stickers, which I love. Um, it gives you an assortment of two different pages and of these fun different patterns, but it's not like an entire roll. Sometimes it's hard to get through a whole roll of washi or feel like it's justifiable. So this one is just a great way to add some fun pops and patterns onto my pages and then they're done. And I didn't end up using this last January. That's the month that it was sent out. So I had it tucked away all those months and now I'm gonna go ahead and incorporate it this year. In addition to that, I pulled some other washi from my stash that I felt like was appropriate and worked with these colors, just some blues, yellow, blues, and greens, some grays, maybe even some black. So those are just some simple washi that I have just sitting out on my desk ready to go for the whole month. And then I also subscribed to the planner spot and while you can see like some of her designs are probably, I would say they're a little more sophisticated than maybe my go-to like colorful look. However, they're super, like these stickers for instance are really versatile. I can add a washi mark onto any of these and kind of give them a little bit more of my color, my color vibe. And so I really like that. But also, as you can see, just her basic black, white, her color schemes are simple. So I feel like they can go with some of these, the green, I could push that. And then some of the more neutral stickers obviously would work it if I want. I want to add really quickly to her just mention that the width of her stickers actually work with that smaller column size that I have for the, the hourlies, which is really unique and I love that about her stickers. Um, they will obviously work at a wider, you know, they're, they give a little bit of extra space on each side in those wider like Happy Planner or Erin Condren style planners or like those other pages that I have, but that they work on the smaller ones really gives me the opportunity to, like I don't feel like I can't use stickers on those smaller pages then I can actually use some and it, these will fit in there nicely. So I do like to incorporate hers and as you can see I've already started playing with them this month because some of them are gone. So there's that. And then last I'm going to kind of scoot these things off here. And I'm just going to share quickly the stamps. I think if you saw my pages, you saw some of the stamps that I'm going that I've already used this month. Um, I'm going to lay them out here and kind of talk about them. Every month, I always am going to use some type of a stick stamp that will help me date my pages. So dating with a month and dating with numbers. This one is from Studio Calico. It's called the January Monthly Series. They will re be releasing one of these every month. The January was released in December. But on January 1st, they will be releasing the February set, so be watching for that. I'll link these below. And these are just a staple I have every month. I love them. I'm so excited that they're re-releasing them because I used to get a lot of questions on these and they weren't available for a while and that made me sad. <laughs> and so I'm really excited that they've been re-available. This particular January set is sold out. But if you follow the link down to their site, you can click a button that says notify me. It doesn't lock you into a purchase but it just lets them know that you're interested and then I think they gauge those numbers and decide if they'll do another release on them. So it is worth clicking because number one, you'll be notified immediately if there is a new set released and number two, it doesn't hurt. It's not like you're purchasing anything when you click that. So let them know that you're interested if you are. Um, because that one is already sold out, I just wanted to share some other sets that I found that are great for dating your undated planner pages. These are all from scrapbook.com. This one is called Months and Years. You can see it goes up through 2025. Just a really great basic font that you can't go wrong with. Uh, these are called the Big Date Stamps. Also go up through 2025. And I like that kind of thinner look. Those are really, really nice. And they actually have some numbers in there too if you needed to combine those. And then Just Months is a little bit smaller, kind of a different font, but also really fun. So I won't be using these this month. Um, when I share one like this, I really like to give you guys some ideas of how I'm using it in my planner. So I'm kind of committed to using that one this month, but these are all super interchangeable and equally great and they will probably be showing up on my pages in future months. Same thing for numbers. These are probably my favorite. They're the Oliver number set, but currently there isn't even a notify me button at Studio Calico for this. So although I still love to use them, I wanted to give you a different option as well that is available. Studio L2E has a just the numbers set here and it's basically the same font, it's just a little bit smaller. These work really well in both A5 and personal size, so I highly recommend these. And then these are um, a Studio Calico, they're called a Jack number set, and if you saw some of my pages, you, it's just this like really bold look. Um, I think I did my 2020 in the beginning of my planner with these. I love this font, and I love the size of them. It makes a really big impact, but it's also something that if you use a light enough ink color, you can write over them or stamp 
other things with them. So these do have a notify me button at Studio Calico right now, which means in my mind that there's a possibility of them having to come back. They might do a restock. So again, it's kind of worth clicking to check it out and see if that's a possibility in the future. So I will link these up as well. But these are the ones that you're going to see in my planner this month. And in addition to that, I did grab this winter set from Studio Calico. It's a super huge set. It's like tons of stamps squeezed onto one page. There's basically an entire quarter's worth. So January, February, March. I'm assuming that they're probably going to be releasing these on a quarterly basis this year. So be watching for that. And I think this is a set that I would be likely to snag. Just some really good basics. Like I love basic shapes that you can use a bunch of different ways in your planner. I love circles and these ones say January, February, and March. Super fun. And then I just think they have cute little messages that can either just add some decorative elements or they can be kind of a, a kickstart for like documented, remember, captured. You can use those kind of as a way to brainstorm some journaling. I feel like they're a really good kickstart for creativity. This little pie, I was like, what is that? Like a pizza? I was trying to figure that out. And then I'll show you real quick. I was just playing with it the other day and I, it's like, oh, I think you can make like a pie chart with that. And so I kind of did and just like, you know, was trying to divvy it out into some of the different areas of my life that I might want to set goals in or something. So just so many fun things that you can create from simple shapes. And so I wanted to share this with you guys because to my knowledge, it's still available and it's something that you'll be seeing in my pages through the months of January, February, and March. So those are the stamp sets that you can kind of count on seeing me use. The colors, the washi tape, the stickers. Oh, and then I do feel like I should mention because I do try to use my color codes or you know some of my stickers, I also keep this little sticker book and it has some of the basic colors that I like to use. I just go ahead and like throw in several sheets of the different colors. So you can see there the green, the aqua, and the gray are going to be used a lot. And then I also just like to find stickers that fit in working with my colors. And so that's kind of what you're glancing through there. And then of course like icons and just some generic shapes and basic things that I always will end up using. So I wanted to throw that out there as well. So yeah, so that's kind of my plan for January. And when I lay it all out, it looks like a lot, but I promise you that behind this little square right here is like a massive, a ton of more materials that I could be like tempted to use. But if I just clear those out after this video, I'll probably clear as many of those out as I can and just have these laying here. And then that is what I will be like 100% more likely to grab because that they're in plain view and they're set aside for me to use through the month of January. So while I don't expect for you to grab the exact same supplies as me to use in January, I really hope that this video just gives you a chance to think about what supplies you might already have, which ones you could pull together to create your own little kit to just use throughout the month. And then I think you'd be happy to see, like I know I enjoy looking back on my pages through the month and seeing a little bit of consistency, some of the same colors popping out. Um, we'll see how well I can do. Like I said, I do have these other three colors that I dearly love too. So it would be like a major act of restraint for me to not use them. But I'm having said that, I really wanna mention this too. Like if you try this out and the first week you like it and then the second week it's like a chore, well gosh, you know, throw in a couple of other colors or throw in some more supplies that bring you joy. That's the whole point is not to make it like a chore. The point for me to do this is to help me use some of the supplies that I have and to help my decision making process go quicker. But if I get sick of this, guess what? <laughs> I'm gonna throw in my other colors and do as I please because planning should be fun and it should be a creative activity and not a chore. So that's the whole point for me. Oops, I forgot to throw my washi out here too. Let's get all the supplies. There we go. Okay, I'll take a picture of that and we'll see how I do. Like I said, I'll try to share a video at the end of the month, kind of like a lessons learned, what I liked, what I didn't, and how well I could stick with this. We'll see how that goes. So stay tuned and thanks for joining me today.